Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I will be demonstrating how to draw heads using the Loomis method. This technique was popularized by Andrew Loomis in his book Drawing the Head and Hands, released in 1956. The Loomis method is a way of generating the basic construction of the face in a drawing in order to correctly proportion the face and accurately place the features on the head. This method generates a very average head but the elements can be altered to change the proportions according to your reference or model. This technique should help you improve your portrait drawing skills significantly. Basically, we will start out with a circle, which represents the cranial mass. Then we have to chop off the side because the side of our head is pretty much flat, not rounded. To do this, draw an oval shape inside the larger circle. This should start where the edge of the eye sits and the beginning of the back of the head. By adding this, we create a flat plane. Next, draw a line through the oval at a slight angle. Then curve this around the front of the circle. This should wrap around similar to a rubber band and it indicates where the brow bone sits. At the bottom of the oval, not at the bottom of the circle, we're going to draw another line that is parallel to the brow line. This indicates the bottom of the nose. From here, we need to create another small line to indicate the jaw. This should be the same width as the space between the brow and the nose line. Lastly, we add a line from the top of the oval, similar to that of the nose, and this will indicate the hairline. As you can start to see, you can basically divide the face into three equal sections. These sections may sometimes be slightly unequal depending on the reference or model you are using. However, for now, we will stick to the equal proportions. From here, we can easily add in the jaw by drawing a curved line from the center of the oval to the line we've made to indicate the jaw. We can also draw a line on the other side to complete the face. Then I will draw two simple lines, one through the centre of the face and one from the corner of the circle to the jaw. This second line will create the distinction between the front and side plane of the head. This is the basic Loomis head quick sketch. You can take this a lot further, but it gives you a great indicator of where to place the features on the face proportionately. I know a lot of artists do take this sketch a lot further, but I normally just start sketching in the features from here. Around a third of the way down from the brow line and the nose line will be the eyes. Halfway between the nose line and the chin line will be the mouth. Along the vertical line through the oval, between the brow and the nose line will be the ear. The next pose we'll be doing is a reference that is looking down. Again, start with the cranial sphere. Where you put the side plane will depend on the tilt of the head, so be sure to really look at your reference or model to see where it should go. Because the reference's head is tilted down in my image, there are a few things that can happen. The oval will be narrower and it will be tilted depending on the angle of the head. The height of the oval should stay relatively the same as other angles. On the opposite side, we don't need to chop off the entire side like in the front of you, but we do need to slightly chop it off. We don't draw an entire oval as it is hidden and we cannot see the side plane. From here, we draw all of the other lines as with the other angles. The jaw will always be parallel to the tilt of the head. In some images, you might experience some foreshortening, but this will be very subtle, and unless you're going for a very specific style, or the reference photograph is extremely close to the face, you will not need to foreshorten too much. A general rule is that the thirds will get smaller the further away from you they get, but only by a little bit. Be sure not to push this too much, and that's it. 
Here, we will be doing a very quick sketch of someone facing straight. In the last sketch, we had to draw an oval on the side of the sphere. However, because this reference is facing forward, we need to cut off both sides of the sphere. From here, you will do the same steps as the last angle. Add in the brow line, the nose line, the chin line and the hairline. From the brow line, draw two slightly curved lines to indicate the front and side planes of the head. Then add a line down the center of the face and you're ready for sketching. Lastly, we'll do a quick profile sketch. Again, start with the cranial mass circle. Then in the direct center of that circle, draw another circle. This should be roughly two thirds of the entire circle. So on each side, there should be a sixth gap between the circles. Again, these measurements are for the average person and may slightly differ from person to person. For a profile, I will immediately go into drawing the line to indicate the center of the face. Then go in as normal and draw the hairline, brow line, nose line and chin line, all at an equal distance. Then go in and draw the jaw as well as the line to indicate the front and side planes of the face and you're done, ready for more sketching. I highly suggest following these simple steps to building guidelines for the proportions of the face. This method has really helped me a lot, as I used to struggle with the correct placement of features. I am not perfect, but I am using this technique to help me improve. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you learned something as well. I hope you have a great day, and be sure to subscribe to my channel. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and that you subscribe to my channel for more tutorials and portrait time lapses. Goodbye!